family, I come back in time to warn you this video is long. We talking about the spook who sat by the door. It's movie time on Giami Journey. We discuss real movies with change, right? So, we starting with um, that. And of course, I want to say to you, Happy Ujima, right? Movies are resources that we are misusing. We need to show ourselves in the light of the victor, not as the victim all the goddamn time. This brother, I tell you, join me for the journey. Let's get it. And remember, take them goose to a challenge. And for those that want to just get that ambrosia, I got a link for you. All right, peace. Peace, fam. How y'all doing? I see I got the honey. It's time. It's, I think it maybe it might be born season. You know, I mean, people's just flocking in, right? Getting calls. I'm loving it. So, yo, keep up the support. So, I got two things up there. I got one thing up there for the Goose of Challenge up on the Facebook page. I'm putting the other one up for, uh, on YouTube, I don't got it up yet, which is the gum.co forward slash Nguza Saba challenge. You know what I'm saying? Where you can actually take the challenge. That one is totally free unless you want to donate, right? It's a one time donation. It says that you're subscribing, but I only got it set for a 30 day trial. So whether you donate or you don't, it's only, it only lasts 30 days. I, then you gotta go back in and renew. Then also I got um, um, gum.co.co forward slash that ambrosia for those individuals that want to give to GNJ, right? You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna read that up. If you wanna give, you give, and Giami give back to you. So now, before I bust this open, I want y'all to see. Well, actually, I kinda busted it open already. You look in there. I, I'm sorry, Facebook. I got it all on the side. I, I want to see how it would look, but I don't feel like starting it over. Y'all see that root? I showed y'all this last night on the show. Last night we had a great show. Um, I was joined by Brother Jonathan from Chicago and Brother Shaka from Cleveland. Um, as a matter of fact, I think next Friday, yeah, next Friday I'm going to be going to court with Brother Shaka. Right? So, we're going to see how that goes. Also, um, we're about to start the toast. I want to say, first off, great Ujima, right? Now, we talked about the lymphatic system for the last two days. No, three days, my fault. So, what we're going to talk about today, right, is I'm going to kind of go back um, and... We are going to do a movie review. I won't say what movie we're going to do yet. We're going to do a movie review. And it's not going to be one of the movies that y'all probably thinking it is, right? 
because I hear a lot of people talking about some of these movies, and I want to talk about some Giamme Journey or what we used to call back in the day, some Mac movies. So I'm going to talk about an old movie today that I believe that everybody that's active in this movement, or at least active with Giamme, need to see. Just putting it point blank. You need to see this this movie um, with the one I'm going to talk about today. All right? So, somebody just joined this. We about to bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. All right. So, we call our ancestors. But first, y'all know we always start with some water. So, my fault. This is my bigger glass. So, we know about two of these. Two of these equal to about 16 ounces. I'm trying to do 32. Come on, family. Grab a drink with your brother. Stay hydrated. We, we heard about the lymphatic system, how important it is. Stay hydrated. One of the things that that hinders our lymphatic system as well as our blood circulation, as well as our respiratory system, you know what I'm saying, as well as our nervous system, is lack of water. So, rather than me challenging you do a bunch of other stuff. I'm challenging you to keep yourself hydrated. It's 70% water. Start the day off by drinking some fresh water. As y'all see, <coughs> excuse me, man, I made it back to the store, so I grabbed me some um, distilled water. Absolutely no taste. All right. So, my YouTube followers, the people that subscribe to me on YouTube, y'all know that I have been experimenting with black seed oil. So, I'm almost out of black seed oil. So, I'm going to take a month off of that and then get back on it and um, see if I notice any difference. Because one of the issues that I have with a lot of these supplements is that I don't feel them, right? And I understand that it's good to get off and get back on. So I'm going to put something for the next few days in place of uh, where I'm going to phase this out as I run out. And I'm going to phase something else in. I'm going to show you what I'm going to phase in in a second. And it'll be in a water portion. But those that are in Schools of Cyber Challenge, I stress to y'all once again that if you can't afford supplements, right, to add to your life, because we do this part with healthy drinks, right, the toast, I suggest to you heavily, right, and very simply, if you can't afford the supplements, if you don't feel like doing supplements, right, you don't need nothing but air, water, meditation, and water. Right, I'm just telling you right now, the most important thing you could do for yourself is start your breathing practice. That's why in the Guzi Saba um, Challenge, one of the first things I'll send you is uh, a breathing or a meditation. Some people call it meditation. I call it focused breathing exercises because that's all you need. So, one of the things that I won't be using to phase out and to replace um the black seed oil for a few days is it's called chlor oxygen right so this is said to clean out the body we're gonna look at chlorophyll and what it does for the body this is chlorophyll concentrate they say about 18 drops 
So I'm gonna pour it in there. You know, he said if I want double, I go and do that. And you know, I don't necessarily want double, but I want y'all to see something. All right. So let's go ahead. So you're supposed to start with about 18 drops. I did a little bit more. I did some around 30 some odd drops. Y'all know I'm extreme. I'm sorry. But even with just 18 drops. Look at that. You see that? Right? Why chlorophyll, Brother High Tim? Well, we're trying to clean, clean out the system. We're talking about breathing. Right? This helps the body produce more red breath blood cells or at least it says it does so i'm taking this to help clean and purify the blood help clean up my blood help push some stuff out my system that might not be coming out by any other way right help to stimulate my lungs as far as the blood flow right help build strong um strong um hemoglobin as well as this will help my body extract more iron out of the food that I eat. All right? So, we're going to take that last sip. Also help clean out your intestines. All right, so let's get it jumping. So y'all see the root? See the root? All right. So now this is start sipping on it. I'm going to take it off of the open breathing and stop. We ain't even open. I'm about to put the top on it so some pressure can build up. So we can start seeing how they react. I wanted y'all to see it. See it? Nice color. We tasted it last night on the show. Smelled it. You can smell the ginseng. This is a different beast, family. Totally different beast. Alright. Don't wanna don't wanna cut the ancestors short. So y'all see this bottle ain't gonna last too much longer. So when we get done, I'm going to eat the root with y'all in the morning. And uh, the brother I tell you I'll break the warrior down. Yeah, sometime we're gonna break that warrior down, right? So Lord have mercy. This root. Mm. All right. Y'all ready? So let's go. I'm sorry, Facebook. I'm on time. This will be the last time that I do it like this. All right. Because there's all that room up there. It's, I don't know what the hell going on. How they designed the camera like that. All right. Here we go. First, you can praise an ancestor by whatever name you choose. Call that ancestor. We call that energy. We call it universal energy. That multiversal um, energy. Um, into our existence. We call on that power to bless and God is in to strengthen us in everything we think, say, and do. We call on that force by whatever name you choose to call it and we say, I say. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. We call on our mothers and our grand, our mothers and our grandmothers, our fathers and our grandfathers, our aunts and our uncles, our friends and our cousins, all those within our circle, right? We call on those who have made their transition to empower us, to strengthen us, to bless us, to guide us. We call on that energy. We call on them. We remember them. We feed them with our thoughts. We feed them with our remembrance. So we we ask them to be present as we call their names. You can start calling your family names as I call my family name, Miles Brown, 
Ms. Ann, Robert and Texana Davis, Ernie Brown Sr., Rosalie Tilly, George William Walton, Christopher Fanny Gatson, Aunt Lena, Uncle Chris, uh, Geneva Brown, Cleveland Brown, Margaret and the Cecil and this. John Fillard, Jamon Jones, Mama Malika, Elder Donaldson, Elder Harrison, Marianne Williams, Nomo X, Sapet Maya Ra, but the pastor, pastor Yusuf Weston, Montague Pitt Manel, Oh, Brother Mark, Brother Mark Welsh, um, those are all that come to mind right now, so we salute them and we salute all the ancestors that may have been called in this moment and we say, Ashe, from there we toast this moment which is Ujima, 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 right? cooperative economics. We call on this principle. We call on the other energies that surround this principle. I can't find my cheat sheet. My brain is not working fast enough right now. So we just call on all of the principles of the day. All of the spiritual laws of the day. We call on that energy and we look for it today. Right? We toast we say our shame. We toast for our children, our children's children, onto infinity. We always remember our children. We always toast our children in advance so that one day, when they become wise enough, they can remember to toast us. And they can use it on our example that we're doing right now to learn the ways of our ancestors, to learn the ways of these days, let's say. All right, so we toast our children and we say our shade. And last but not least, we toast any challenges or we send out any blessings that we need to send out as a family, right? Um, for my students and for some other students around the city of Columbus and maybe around the country, today is the last day of school. Um, we know for some of our kids the summer is rough, so we ask our ancestors, we ask Creator to bless our children and watch out for them over this journey, over this summer. You know what I'm saying? We, 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 we call our ancestors out, you know what I'm saying? We ask them to be vigilant and on duty to, to help our children make some of the right decisions, okay? We toast and we say, I say, I say, I say, we wish you peace, power, joy, and 100 years. in my back. Good God Almighty. I'm going to let the other one sit a little bit longer. This one, you taste the root. So next time, because I'm going to be brewing again, on the next batch, I'm going to put about three roots in one bottle. See what that do. Because one root did this for this. I wonder what would happen if I did about three roots. If I do about three roots, three to four roots, just overloaded. I wonder what that would do. I wonder how that would taste. That's that's the next step. You know what I'm saying? So at this rate, it's gonna this is gonna be expensive, family. Peace, Facebook. All right. YouTube. Now, it's time for us. So now, what are we doing today? All right. So, today, right, we're going to get 
Hey, we ain't gonna get off the health kick. We still gonna stay on the health kick, right? Because we got to stay energized. But, you know, brother, I didn't like to talk about stuff. And the, the thought hit me last night. So I was coming in the house. Dude, you need to do a movie review. Now, the movie, and a lot of movies I'm gonna review, are going to be old school movies, right? Because there's enough people out there throwing up their thoughts about these recent movies. That I don't need to do that, right? What I need to do is to go back to some, what, what I feel are some must-see movies so that, you know what I'm saying, before you even go see some of the latest movies, you got you a compendium, I hope that's a word, of 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 movies that you could build up your ideas because we're constantly talking about changing thoughts and, and, and controlling our thoughts and controlling our actions and changing the story you know y'all hear me use that a lot of time changing the narrative right so we need to be able to prescribe music and, and and movies to help you do that right and one of the movies that i think that everybody at least in g and j everybody has any connection to g and j whether you just sipping on that ambrosia well you know you can sip on that ambrosia and just do whatever the hell you want to do that's your choice those of you that want to be in the mind state that created this ambrosia right so that you can really get the full benefits so that you can be within within this loop right this divine loop and get the full effect of that ambrosia right you have to go on and start sitting down and watching some of the movies that help that inspires or inspired me to move to the point where 48 years old I came up with a concept called that ambrosia. Now I need everybody to understand this, right? So um, that ambrosia is not just a, a drink. It is the culmination of uh, a nation building dream, a culture building dream, right? I have always wanted some form of product. I always wanted something that I could offer to my fam um, to help build, right? Because one of the major issues with any type of building, right? whether we talking about organization building, whether we talking about nation building, whether we talking about, you know what I'm saying, building a house, right? One of the first things that have to be there is the resources to do it. And in all instances, I have always been stopped and my group has always been stopped because we lack the financial wherewithal to come up with anything that can help us, right? I mean, you know, we come up with ideas, but a lot of those ideas relied on outside resources. So when I stumbled upon this ambrosia, right? Brewing this ambrosia when I fell upon this family. Oh, we gon' we gonna get it done. So when people give to Giame, Giame to the people. You understand what I'm saying? So so to really understand that mind state, right? I'm gonna come up with a list of movies that I think people need to see so that you can really understand what brother what formed Brother High Tim, what got me pursuing taking these supplements and a lot of supplements that I pull out, you see this directly from from Africa, right? A lot of the food that we're gonna talk about, you see, you're gonna see it's directly from Africa, right? You know what I'm saying? Why? Because I'm trying to plug us back into our cultural or at least the place where we gonna get our cultural framework, right? Because everything that's coming out of Africa might not suit us. And everything that's coming from the past, right, might not be good for us, right? We might need to remix it. We might need to go back and fetch it, but then bring it back and do it like we used to do it. <laughs> Hop. Remix, right? We need to remix. We need to take, oh, like y'all see what I did with the Ashe breath. I remixed that shit. I, I, I took it and I remixed it and I made it ours. Like the week. I took it and I remixed it and I made it ours, right? So right now I'm DJing reality. Damn, that's cold. Man, see, that's why I love not having a script. 
I D, I'm DJing reality for you. Cut, cut, cutting that shit up, right? Mixing, cutting and mixing, right? Reappropriating for ourselves, all right? So, the movie that I'm going to cover, that I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to speak on right now is called The Spook Who Sat By The Door. Now, what I'm going to do is in the credits, I am going to put a link to the movie, right? Um, cause it's, 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 it's hard to get, right? Um, I don't know if you get a digital download. I know it's on YouTube, but you, it's also a book. Okay. I read the book. I try to see the movie at least once a year. I often post clips up. I think I'm going to post up a couple of clips up today. And just, just for historical sake. The Spook Who Sat By The Door was directed by somebody named Ivan Dixon. It was produced by Ivan Dixon and Sam Grim Greenlee. And if any of this is wrong, because I got other people out there that's on this stuff, right? If any of this is wrong, feel free to let me know so I can make corrections. Okay? Um, the book was written by Sam Greenlee. Alright? Written by Melvin Clay and Sam Greenlee. Based on the spook who sat by the door, a novel by Sam Greenlee. Um, it starred Lawrence Cook, Paula Kelly, Janet Leigh, J. A. Preston, David Lamont. Music by Herbie Hancock. Um, cinematography was Michael Hugo. It was distributed by United Artists. The release date was September 21st, 1973. The movie's running time is 102 minutes. Of course, it was in the United States, English. Now, I just wanted to go through all this. Right now, I'm pulling from weekly leaks so we know that some of this shit could be wrong. That's why I'm saying if you pick up anything that I'm saying that's wrong, feel free to um, share because I, I'm far from knowing it all. I just know a little bit about a lot of things, right? The Spook Who Sat By The Door is a 1973 action crime drama film based on a 1969 novel of the same name by Sam Greenlee. It is both a satire of the civil rights struggle in the United States of the late 1960s and a serious attempt to focus on the issue of black militancy. Dan Freeman, the titular protagonist, is enlisted in the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, I do remember in the book that it was the FBI, but I could be wrong. Elitist espionage program as its token black. After mastering HC tactics, however, he becomes disillusioned, disillusioned and drops out to train young Chicago blacks as a freedom fighter. As a story of one man's reaction to white ruling class hypocrisy, the film is loosely autobiographical autobiographical and personal all right um let me see after mastering the agent tactic tactics however he become disillusioned so now in the movie you kind of get the idea that that it wasn't that he got disillusioned this was part of the whole plan all right the novel in the film also dramatized the CIA's history of giving training to persons and or groups who later utilized their specialized intelligence trainings against the red um, HC. The example of blowback. It ain't happening from us. They don't get no blowback from us, right? Directed by Ivan Dixon, co-produced by Dixon and Greenlee from a screenplay written by Greenlee and Mel Clay, the film starred Lawrence Cook, Paula Kelly, Janet Lee, Jay Preston, and David Lamar. It was mostly shot in Gary, Indiana, because the themes of racial strife did not please Chicago's then mayor, Richard J. Daly. The soundtrack was composed by Herbie Hancock. In 2012, the film was added to the National Film Registry which annually chooses 25 films that are culturally, historically, or, or, or aesthetically significant and are at least 10 years old. Now let's look at the plot real quick and then we're going to get into Mr. To, to Mr. Brother Hot Tim's 
um, breakdown. The story takes place in the early 1970s in Chicago. The CIA has been required for a political reason to recruit African American for training. Only one of them, Dan Freeman, played by Lawrence Cook, secretly a black nationalist, see, you know what I'm saying, successfully, successfully completes the training process. He becomes the first black man in the HC and is given a desk job. Top Secret Reproduction Center Section Chief, which means he is in charge of the copy machine. Freeman understands that he is a token black person in the CIA and that the CIA defines his function as providing proof of the agency's supposed commitment to integration and progress. Therefore, after completing his training in guerrilla warfare techniques, weaponry, communication, and subversion, Freeman puts in just enough time to avoid raising any suspicion about his motives before he re resigns from the CIA and re returns to work in the social services in Chicago. Upon his return, Freeman immediately begins recruiting young black men living in the inner city of Chicago to become freedom fighters, teaching them all of the guerrilla warfare tactics that he learned from the CIA. They become a guerrilla group with Freeman as the secret leader. The freedom fighters set out to ensure that black people truly live freely within the United States by partaking in both violent and nonviolent actions throughout Chicago. The Freedom Fighters of Chicago begin spreading the word about their guerrilla warfare attacks across the United States. And Freeman says, what we got now is a colony. What we want is a new nation. As revolt and a war liberation continues in the inner city Chicago, the National Guard and police desperately try to stop the Freedom Fighters. The, film, the, the film provides discussion about black militancy and violent reactions that took place by white America in response to the progress of the civil rights movement. All right, so we won't go into because if you want to go to Wikipedia, they got um, the historical context, critical reception. Because of course, you know this movie wasn't received. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of you might have not even heard about the movie but there is a documentary that came out in 2111 I mean 2011 I said 2111 right <laughs> but it's 2011 the rise and fall of the spook who sat by the door and was released by and directed by Christine Ackham and Clifford Ward you can check that out um, it features Sam Greeny and others involved in the making of the film when they talk about the making of the film this film um, I'm kind of disappointed because nobody has even thought about doing a remake, right? And I think maybe one of the, one of the quests of G and J is to do a remake of this movie, right? Let's sell enough ambrosia and get this movie made. Hell, let's do a fund me, right? And get this movie made. I mean, we got enough talented people to go on and do this. You know what I'm saying? We got enough, you know, because we get shocked to do the soundtrack. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, we get Brother John Calhoun to to um, direct the movie. I mean, I, we got we got people in our circle that could do this damn movie. It's just a matter of um, getting the uh, the financing to probably do it. You know, but you know, like I said, we can get some big big names, and they're not big names, but at least mid range names in it. But I think it would be nice to redo this, especially with all of the fuckery that's going on right now, right? So now this is the issue. This is why I wanted to bring up this movie, right? Because right now, this movie, man, this movie changed my life. Because I saw for the first time somebody hitting back. Right, my whole life I've been taught to hit back when it was somebody that looked like me. Right, hit back, you better fight. But if it was a West Asian that hit me, I, you know, I'm supposed to turn the other cheek. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to respect them. You know what I'm saying? But my whole life I've been taught to, to you know what I'm saying? To fight me. Right, I've never been able to told to fight the other, to stand up to the other. And when I seen this movie, Right in my early twenties, this blew my mind. I, you know, I would suggest that everybody add it to their video library. Go out and buy one. Support the movie. Right, buy the book. 
You know what I'm saying? I had the book. Somebody stole the book. I bought the movie three times and I stole it once. I, I admit it. This movie touched me so much that I stole it. I actually I liberated the damn movie from Blockbuster, right? Some then somebody liberated it from me. I had that. I, I somewhere I still probably got the 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 v, VHS somewhere. That's how this movie affected me, right? I I I used to. I always had an extra. Um, I came up with what they call the little round things, the little round disc. You know what I'm saying? I always had an extra DVD of this shit in my bag, just in case I was at a meeting. Because I, I used I used to have way more meetings than I have now, just in case I was at a meeting and we started discussing. Because this movie sets the framework, right? Boom, um, and it shows somebody taking information, right? Redefining it. Looking at it through a cultural lens, not being all out and mad about it, right? Being able to get in and get the information, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of y'all need to understand, Sun Tzu says, warfare is deception, right? So you see a lot of the tactics, right, that were used against us, being used to gather information. Oh, I'm your friend. I'm going to find out about it. See, that's some shit that's used on us. Oh, let us help you with your struggle. That's some shit that's used on us, right? And what you what you see in this movie is finally somebody else is thinking like me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because I'm like this. I respect the whole nonviolent thing, right? Because it takes courage. A certain amount of courage to do that, right? But a lot of people, I believe, and this is just my opinion, a lot of people are not gravitating toward the nonviolent piece for the courageous aspect of it, right? I honestly believe that a lot of people are gravitating towards the nonviolent piece, right? Out of cowardice. Now, don't get me wrong, because I know a lot of nonviolent people who are far from cowards, they will put their body on the line. But there's a lot of people that talk this nonviolent shit that are not willing to put their body on the line. They're not willing to put their livelihood on the line. You know what I'm saying? They're just nonviolent because they don't want to rock the boat. Right? Coward shit. Right? Because when you actually look at the strategy of nonviolence, that's some warrior shit. Right? When you sit down and you go through the coursework and you look at the training and the preparation for the actual nonviolent movement, if you want some real spiritual development, I want you to really look at that curriculum. Right? Yeah, really, really look at that curriculum. Right? Because it's more than just not hitting back. It's right. It's using, it's basically putting, it's basically putting the the, the heroic journey of Jesus to life, bringing it to life in your life, right? I want y'all to think about that, right? It's not just talking Jesus, right? It's talking about allowing yourself to be the sacrifice to move your movement forward. It means that you're on the front lines putting your body at risk. As a matter of fact, when the blows come, you're going into the blows so that you could be an example so that other people can see. Like, but I tell that's stupid, right? It's stupid if you if you're looking at it from the standpoint of the of of, of a victim, right? Those individuals who practice the whole nonviolence piece put themselves on the line as the victim. They say, I am above this. And when they really when they really practice it, you can see it. You can feel the, the fearlessness. But then some of y'all just faking the funk because you don't want, you don't want to be free. What you want to be is you just want to be treated right. You want them to pat you on the head and be like, good job, boy. Or no, you don't want to call your boy no more. You want to say, good job, mister. You know what I'm saying? You want them to change the lingo and how they deal with you, right? You want to make sure that you just treat it fairly. That's it. Fuck the fact that the system is all fucked up, right? And it's bigger than just you and bigger than just us. 
right? That if we don't get it right, you know, they might treat our generation right, but they'll go back to their old ways. Some of y'all, you know. So now, enough of the nonviolence. And I also recognize the, the power of having an arm, right? Because that's a strategy. Just like not, just nonviolence is a strategy, violence is a strategy as well. And this movie highlighted this as a strategy. And it lays out a framework in which you can develop this whole framework. Right? It showed how a single individual can actually do it because if you have ever worked in the streets, you see the capabilities, you see the raw materials for freedom fighters. You see it. Right? And basically what this movie points out is that it's possible. It's possible. Right? All you got to do is find those with the commitment. And one of the things that you find about the young people is, see, and this is why, this is why middle-aged motherfuckers like myself have never, we, we have never led a revolution. I take that back. We led the revolution, but it ain't us. Even in nonviolent peace, when you look at it, it wasn't, it wasn't motherfuckers with the gray like me. It wasn't some of you, some of y'all, right? I look at my, my analytics, and it was the group of my analytics that are about 32%, the 18 to 25 year olds, right? Who always bring in the change. And they recognize this in America. This is why the military recruits your ass at these ages. What is the military? The military arm of any culture is the arm of the culture that helps maintain what the gains of that culture, the gains of the, 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 the military, the, the military helps maintain and sustain the borders of the people, the borders of the nation, right? Right? That's what it does, right? We the only motherfuckers that's talking about building uh, a culture, building a nation without borders. That shit don't exist. Don't exist can't exist, right? Every nation needs needs border. Why? Because the borders give us a point where it separates us from them. And I know a lot of people are like we don't we want to get away from the us from them paradigm. But the point is we can't get away from the us and them paradigm, right? Because there needs to be a separation line where there is if we're going to have commerce, right? The only way we're going to get away get away from this is when we don't have commerce. Right? Because that line allows you to let you know you from them. So when they cross that border, there's a fee. And when they take stuff out of that border, there's a fee. And when they take your resources out of that border, across that border, there's a fee. When they import their shit, across, there's a fee. Why? Because within the borders, when you look, if you look at it, if, if this... If these are my borders and everything that goes on inside of here is mine, I have to have a way to finance that. So the people inside of it have to work together to finance it, whether they're using uh, money, whether they're using um, their, their, their resources as far as their skills. Everything that goes on inside that circle funds this circle. But if I allow people to come inside my circle and I open it up and they can come in and walk in like they want, they're eventually going to take out all my resources, which is going to cause my circle to collapse. But if I balance out what people bring in and what I, what I allow them to take out, it keeps my circle running along with the skills and the money or the resources that I'm collecting from people within that circle. Y'all see? You come to our community, you come to our neighborhood. Dog, it's open season. Open season. You know what I'm saying? I mean, think about this. Think about this. How much harder would it have been for crack and all this other shit to get into our community if we had borders? Right? We depend on other motherfuckers to even maintain. Actually, the police are an occupying force 
that maintains order within the community. They're not even there to protect you. This is one of the things you learn from the spook set by the door. Their job is to protect property. Now, another quote from from um, um, uh, the spook who sat by the door, another got you, got me thinking, I always use it. He said, you can't fall out of bed if you sleep on the floor. What? Like, brother, I tell you, what the, what the fuck does that mean? And he basically used it to frame that, this idea. He said, there's no way that America could keep us on our ass and police the world at the same time. This was back in night. What, what year was what year did they say? What year was that? Think about that shit. You know what I'm saying? You, we're willing participants in our oppression. This is why I asked the question last night: Are we oppressed? Or are we repressed? Right? Are we repressing? How do we got psychological locks on us that keep us from expanding from the position we was in? Right? You know, I mean, it's, it, I mean, the motherfuckers could just disrespect us in a sly, slick way. And because they use a language, they don't get a, you know what I'm saying? They use a certain, they don't get a slap. See, y'all got to understand, man. Motherfuckers are always going to disrespect. I learned this about bullies a long time ago. Motherfuckers going to keep on messing with you as long as you allow it. Right? You know, you can follow all the steps. I tell my kids, follow all the steps. Right? Ask them to stop. We done asked. Tell them to stop. We done told them. You know what I'm saying? Remove yourself from this. We done try to remove ourselves from the situation. We done move into our own communities. You know what I'm saying? We try to stay amongst ourselves and shit. You know what I'm saying? But it's impossible when there's no economic, no economic life. You know what I'm saying? Tell them years ago, we done been praying to Jesus, God, our life. You know what I'm saying? We get our ass kicked no matter who we ask it. What do you do when all that stuff don't work? You kick some ass. Or you get your ass kicked. Let me tell you something about a bully. Right? Most bullies just want to win. They don't want they don't want to fight. Let me say that again. Most bullies just want to win. Family, when you put a fight on a motherfucker, right? And they realize that is not going to be an easy, easy victory. They were never planning to fight you in the first place. They'll leave you the fuck alone. They'll give you your space. They'll allow you to live your life. And they'll never fuck with you again. Especially if they see you get prepared. You understand what I'm saying? Family. You know what I'm saying? So movies like that inspire thoughts. And it paints a different picture than the pictures we always get. Right? We get these little minor victories or we get limited victories and shit. This shit ended with the balloon going up. This is what my, my stepfather Larry Johnson used to tell me about. He said that when the balloon go up, what that mean? What that mean, Larry? That means it's war start. When that balloon went up, you know what I'm saying? We was up. God damn it, we was up. We had shut down the eighty second airborne. They spent sent their special forces. Them boys was up. And I have never seen a movie where we was winning. Like even with, you know what I'm saying? Even with uh, um, 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 Nat Turner, you know that shit. We know how that shit is. I, I still ain't seen it, right? I still suggest people see it. I, still, I know how it ends, right? All the movies end, you know, um, sh um uh, what is shut? What's, what's, his, what's his name? Unleashed? Django Unleashed? We know how it ends. Right? The motherfucker had, a, had that small victory, but he still is surrounded in an environment where any time him and his wife can be snatched up and taken back into slavery. As a matter of fact, we might need to see a Django too, because them motherfuckers might be might have been recalled. Right? You know what I'm saying? Let's see Django's descendants. Where the where they at? Right? You understand what I'm saying? So, this is Brother I Tim, and I'm saying peace because my camera is not going to allow me to, to continue. And I, I, you know, I went over. But hey, fam, I love you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the comments. Let's build. Peace. 
Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there, the fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there.